Hello, people. Good morning. Sorry to be a touch behind. Good morning. I'll let everybody get in here. I know I meant to have my little thing streaming before nine. My wife gets home to me. I didn't realize that if you were trying to get in and it nine o'clock hit that it told you that the meeting wasn't happening. I, I, I apologize. Mm. Good call. Good morning, Nellie. How's everybody doing? Morning, Christy. Morning, Jenna. Morning, April. Doing awesome. That's great. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Give everybody a time, a little bit of time to get here. Good morning, Shanda. Doing great. Awesome. Love you too, Onesia. Morning, Christy. I have to tell one, hadn't happened in a long time. All right, Patricia, be careful. Have, this hasn't happened in a long time. So me and Amanda uh, last night had uh, uh, gotten, taken her shoes off, right? We had got home, taken her shoes off. Lord, I'm trying to figure out how to use TikTok uh, for work. And um, I mean, we had, we'd had dinner and everything. And uh, she reminded me that um, she had some pictures. We've done this, I didn't know. She had some pictures from her phone uh, developed at Walmart and she did it through the app. So all of this stuff happened in the interwebs and then we were supposed to go to Walmart and pick up pictures. I had no idea. So we put her shoes back on yesterday. This is a funny story. And uh, went to the Walmart in Calhoun because we live in Calhoun, in case you didn't know. Yes, we live in Calhoun now which is why the story is even uh, is funny at all uh, because it happened in Dalton quite a bit, but I digress. We're in Calhoun uh, uh, in the Walmart, not going in the food section because we're going to, you guessed it, the photo section. My wife, uh, who has been crafty since we moved into our new home, um, Amanda Stewart is what my uh, my sponsor calls her, so I think it's kind of funny. Uh, but she's got this creative uh, bone that has she didn't know she had. <laughs> anyway, so in between the front door and the photo aisle is the uh, craft section. So of course we had to stop in the craft section, and and me being the 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 typical male that I am. Um, I search the aisles until I find exactly what she's looking for. And I wait there for 20 minutes while she looks at things that have nothing to do with, with what she was looking in the craft section for. But I'll digress even more. We finally make it back to the photos and she decides she wants creamer. So we didn't even have a buggy. And we go over to the, um, you know, get our pictures. We've got our little paint pen and we've got, um, Lord, what was it? Some sort of uh, sticky, gluey stuff and some fake flowers. And we start heading over to the, the creamer. We get our creamer and without a buggy, you now this is starting to, to pile up, right? So she can't hold everything. So we start sharing the burden. Yeah, we start sharing the burden of this stuff uh, that we're collecting and we decide okay let's go ahead we'll get some groceries too so we're we're toting more and more stuff go around and get some more uh, lean turkey we go and, and get a thing of retail and um 
Let's see what else. So we got um, a red onion, some jalapenos. I, we didn't chop a lot. We just got a few things. Uh, got one little thing of Halo Top ice cream. <laughs> and we go and we check out. Uneventful, right? Nothing big. You know, it's, we get out of there. It was probably, I don't know, $25, which we were not going to spend anything right? because the pictures had already been paid for. Um, I'm, I'm, I shouldn't have said that either. But so you're like, what's funny about this story? It, it, got, it didn't get funny until this morning when I woke up to a messenger message from a member who said, and I did, I, I, I must, um, anyway, I, I will tell this story. As we're walking from the creamer to the turkey, you pass the milk section, you know, in, our, in the Walmart there. The, and there's an open top refrigerator you know, that you just reach down in to get stuff that's got eggnog. It's holiday season, right? Eggnog. And I don't know about you guys, eggnog, ugh. But uh, I said, you want to pick up some eggnog while we're here? And she says, I only like eggnog with rum. And I said, ugh, even, I don't know how you could stomach eggnog. I guess the rum would be the only way to make eggnog palatable, but uh, I said, if you just want, anyway, that was a, I shouldn't even tell that whole part. Anyway, no eggnog, but I did mention it as we went by. And this is where the funny story comes in because Amanda likes eggnog. I do not like eggnog. And we made it home successfully. Fast forward to this morning. This member's message says, um, I need to confess something to you. I said, okay. Here is she have at it. And uh, she says, I saw you and Amanda at Walmart last night, but I couldn't bring myself to say hello to you because I was afraid. And I said, Why would you be afraid to say hello to me and Amanda? I mean, I, we had already dressed down and we were just slipping in and out of Walmart. We we were trying to blend in. You know what I'm saying? And uh, she said, because I had gone, I had seen the eggnog and I was afraid if, if I put it in my buggy that you would see me and that you would admonish me for not having Shibboleth approved items in my shopping cart. So she went back and put all of her holiday food up and only got Shibboleth approved stuff. She was confessing that her husband had laughed at her because she went home and told him and he had, he had uh, doubled over laughing at her. So I have officially um, shamed someone into not buying anything that was not Shibboleth approved at the uh, Calhoun Walmart. I just, I guess I'm going to have to make more trips down there and uh, uh, during shopping time. And I, Somebody needs to walk through Walmart. Like maybe I'll see Travis in Walmart when I'm being bad and I can put the stuff back in. <laughs> One of the ladies years ago, when this fellow named Tyler worked at, at, in the Dalton Center, he would go do grocery stores and a lot of times people would run from him. Like he would, he would be waving, they would turn around and run <laughs> because they didn't want him to see what was in their buggy. A funny story. I, I'm I'm glad I got to share that with you. It, well, we had a, we, it was it would it would uh, I would have not thought what, this. Did got, just so y'all know, if you ever see me at the grocery store, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge you over what's in your buggy. I will help you find something that's approved if you need to, but I'm not gonna judge you over what's in your buggy. Listen, I have done Shibboleth for years now, and I have had kids in the house the whole time. There's always going to be something that's not approved in our buggy when we're going through, uh, when, well, in the past, we don't have very many kids uh, at the, in, in the home now, and, and they do their own shopping now, the ones that are, but yeah, that, that's, that's a, this is a normal thing, a normal thing to go through when we're um, 
worship both of them, but I thought y'all would get a kick out of that. I certainly did. I, I did. I barely laughed this morning. It was hilarious. All right. Uh, good morning to you guys. Happy Tuesday. This is our finale week. This is our finale week. And it's already gone on too long, just so you know. And I, I hate to run a challenge more than three weeks. Um, they always run their course in three weeks. People get tired of eating off the same meal plan. They get tired. Maybe they get tired of my voice. They get tired of, of uh, the strictness of it. Uh, whatever it may be, for some, whatever it is, challenges always peter out after about three weeks. For the majority. For the majority. Some people love to challenge every day, every week. Some people do better, you know, week in and week out when they're challenging. I get it. I, um, I all the reason why I started doing challenges is because I always did better when challenge when we did challenges. Challenges are um, the, the my focus when I am really strict and doing really well has always been around declared days, at least to myself, and being consistent. Um, but this is the finale week for Fall Focus. I don't have another challenge on my agenda yet, okay, yet. I will be putting something together. Uh, last year, we did the self-mastery challenge after the uh, Fall Focus challenge. Uh, and it was a great challenge. It is a lot of work, a lot of work. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that, um, how that pans out, whether or not, we transition into the self mastery challenge or not, but um, it was fun. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad, Robin. That's great to hear. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna do something. Don't 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 fret. It'll it'll come together. But we gotta. Um, there has to be a downtime. I I don't I don't particularly want a downtime because. Um, uh, these challenges are very important to my my income. Uh, as far as that goes, but I'm trusting the Lord. Everything's going to be okay one way or another. I, I truly believe that. Um, I have uh, I have to I have to learn just like everybody else how to have exceptional faith, which really is is part of my uh, my little message for this morning. I want to finish this. It got cold on me. I'm not a cold coffee drinker. How many of y'all drink cold coffee on purpose? I mean, not like not because it was left in your cup and got cold, but how many of you really like put ice in coffee or any of that mess? Speaking of, while y'all are typing, in case you didn't remember, it's supplement time, supplement time, zero drag vitamins plus pro this morning for me, hot coffee. I drink iced coffee on occasion. You like hot much better. I just can't do cold coffee. I never, I, it just, I don't know why something about it is a no for me. Um, I mean, I have some, I don't, I swear, I, if I, I always worry that I'm going to say something that I, I have some, some um, alternative friends. That's the best way I know how to say it. They like this uh, steeped coffee. Have y'all ever had cold steeped? Coffee. Any any of you guys? Co steeped coffee, like like uh, it, which which basically you, you it just filters down cold steep like you would steep um, tea. It's it's a trendy. I want to say I want to say yuppie, but I don't know that it's necessarily yuppie. These people are kind of weird that I'm talking about. It is cold brew, but it's it's called it's called steeped, like you would steep tea. And um, find you a coffee shop that has it. Typically, it's done through gravity. In other words, they will they'll they'll put the coffee and the water somewhere high, and it and it will steep down into a container below uh, slowly. And yeah, cold brew is, is part of it, but look, I, it, I didn't like it either. <laughs> I didn't like it either. Huh. I guess I'm old fashioned. 
be like the old cowboys in the in the west with the little coffee thing where you grind your bean and you you put it up over the fire in your little percolator your little self uh self done percolator i like to chew grounds every once in a while i'm i'm kind of old school when it comes out i really don't but i like it like that strong bold and, and regular all right supplement time let's get it in Uh, it's better for me accountability wise to do this with y'all, I promise. Try it, Robin. Tell me what you think. I didn't find it to be bolder. Um, I just found it to be expensive <laughs> maybe expensive and um i don't know why you would have to take something that that is you know you can do really my little keurig will take a little bit of coffee and a little bit of hot water and make me a cup in like a minute and a half two minutes i don't know why you'd have to take all day or all night to make a pot of coffee that that's kind of where my brain goes and then it can't be good enough to justify that part of the process. There you go. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about failure and how important it is. Um, you know, not the correction of God. We, there, I've got plenty of, of lessons on that, y'all. Uh, uh, that's not the way the Lord's leading me today. Um, I want to first reach out to um, everybody that I've called their name here in the last week or two or three or four or five because I know you and use you for an example. Please don't think today's lesson is geared towards anybody that I know, Patricia included, because I know Patricia had uh, uh, tagged me and we've, we've already spoken today specifically about uh, an eating episode that happened last night. This, this message may be for you, okay? It may be for you. It may line up exactly with where you are, which is the way the Lord works. But I promise this lesson is for everybody, especially me, especially me, because it is, um, that's, that's, the way, that's the way the Lord works. In my life, the Lord always has, when I get a message, it's always for me first. Uh, so uh, let me say, today's word is failure. Huh. How many of you like to hear that word? How many of you like to associate with that word? How many of you, um, when, you, when, you when you fail, and um, how many of you uh, attach defeat with failure? And how many of you, we don't, none of us, right? None of us. None of us like to fail. None of, none of, none of us like to be considered a failure. Um, failing is very normal. Failing is part of success. Um, I, would, I would say, hey, I'm going to give you a, a nice motivational speech. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Point you to Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, who always liked to turn, turn around this argument of success. You're the, you're the, the GOAT, the greatest of all time. You are statistically, uh, uh, you know, the best. And he would say, I'm also statistically the worst because I've, in order to be as successful as I have been, he would say, you have to look at all the times that I've taking the game winning shot and missed. You have to look at all the times that I failed. You know, Michael Jordan didn't make the basketball team one year, right? Like me, I didn't make the basketball team one year. And what did that mean? To me, it meant I never tried out again. Not for Michael Jordan, but for Jason Whitener, a little seventh grader at Dalton Junior High School. That's what it meant. So instead of, right, instead of, Learning from my failure, pushing, doing different from my failure. 
Michael Jordan's example was kind of where I'm going with this lesson. So um, I want to talk about um, what it's like, you know, what, what failure does to us, okay, what failure does to us, and um, how we can overcome failure. I want to talk about probably the biggest failure of all time, <laughs> biggest failure of all time today, and that is, um, well, let me see if I can remember his name. Um, See if I can find it because, yeah, his name is Simon Barjona, <laughs> but uh, Jesus called him Peter. I guess y'all see my verse right here, First Peter chapter five, six through seven. You might not think of Peter as a failure, but Peter was pretty much one of the biggest failures of all time. I've got some notes here. Maybe you can relate. I can relate to Peter. Maybe you can relate to Peter. Headstrong, smart, hardworking leader. Maybe these are not words that you associate uh, with a with a failure, but but these are definitely you would maybe think those are Michael Jordan type uh, descriptors, right? Headstrong, smart, hardworking leader. There's just some things that I wrote down. When I think of what I've, I've ever known about Peter, the, 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 the studying I've done, uh, the lessons I've heard over my lifetime uh, where people have preached about Peter or used Peter in some sort of a, uh, a way. Um, when y'all think about Peter, Simon Peter, do y'all think he's, do y'all think about failure? What is, what do you think about Peter? Y'all feel free to, to, respond you know if you don't know anything about peter that's fine but uh i i i, I want to donna i want to stir you up today i want to stir you up today and and hopefully y'all will participate in the chat with me for a minute y'all what do y'all think about peter fiery personality that's right so karen you think about peter in the in the garden when they come to get the lord he, he broke out his sword and he cut the ear off of the soldier don't you, you maybe think about that did not give up nearly karen thoughts so. out man karen there you go he fiery headstrong I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna put that in there fiery put that in my notes anybody else y'all think about peter he's brave he was brave. I think of the time when the Lord came walking across the waters and remember in the sea. He's walking across the troubled sea. And Simon looked and said, Lord, help save us, right? And uh, and the Lord called him out to walk on the water. He's brave enough to step out. I don't know how many of us would do that? He was brave. He was bold. I want to tell you this. Um, he he was a massive failure. He was a massive failure. Um, but that doesn't mean that that uh, he got given up on. I want all of y'all to hear a little bit of what I got to say. Being bold was part of his 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 problem, uh, Jim. Um, Peter being headstrong part of his problem. Hope y'all can relate. All that meant, all that means, y'all, that is that he was confident in himself. We often are confident in ourselves. Even the most timid and meek of us are forced to live here in our flesh. We live here in our flesh, and our flesh is where our weakness is. Even Jesus said, My flesh is. It is weak, but my spirit is willing, right? Even Jesus it had to acknowledge having been fully in the flesh that, that it is our flesh that is weak. There is a part of us, Rosalie, a part of you and me that must acknowledge that we are weak, that we are weak in our flesh 
in order to overcome these obstacles that continue to make us fail, that we continue to fail over. But not just that, I want to tell you guys that failure is part of our success. If we don't really try and fail again, we'll not see the benefits of the success. I have great regret for not trying over and over again to make the team when I was younger, instead of getting my feelings hurt and quitting the, the process uh, for, uh, for be, making the basketball team. I still, as a, I've been out of school a long time, especially junior high school, but I still hold that against myself for not uh, trying uh, uh, again. So let's, let's, let me, let me, uh, let me tell you about a time where um, uh, a lesson that we can learn from Peter, okay? A lesson we can learn from Peter. Peter, uh, there was a time when uh, Jesus picked a few trustworthy people. I'm gonna say he picked Christy, uh, Melanie, and Tracy. Jesus picked Christy, Melanie, and Tracy because they, 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 because that those three had been talking to him regular, had been following him regular, been listening to him regular, right? Christy, she's a mighty, mighty woman of, of, of God, a mighty fine disciple. Melanie, the same. Tracy, the same. Jesus called um, them out and said, here's what I want you to do. Very explicit, right? I want you to drink your water. I want you to watch your portion. I want you to, to, to watch your, your, your combinations and I want you to be, uh, I want you to, to, to just, just do that. That's all you got to do, right? He, and that's not what he said. That's not what he said. This is what he told Peter. He said, watch and pray. So I said, all you had to do was watch and pray, but Peter was in his flesh. Y'all know what Peter did? Not once, but several times. He went to sleep. He went to sleep. He, 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 he looked away long enough, or he daydreamed, or his eyes got heavy, or whatever it was. We don't know exactly what it was except for all three of them, the ones who were chosen to watch and pray, fell asleep. That, that was a monumental failure. But for Peter, it got worse. Not only did Peter, headstrong Peter, always rebuking the Lord, Jesus Jesus was what, what, tells several stories in the Bible about how Peter rebuked him, right? And Jesus would have to turn around and rebuke Peter. One time, one time, Peter said that he would never deny the Lord. And old Jesus said, oh, but Peter, you will, not once, not twice, but three times will you deny me, right? Think about that. Every time that Peter denied the Lord, listen to me, this is important. Every one of us, important for Jason. Every time Peter denied the Lord, those three times, what was he choosing over Jesus? Do y'all know? He's choosing the world. He was choosing the world. I don't want to stand out, not right now. Why not right now? Because it will cost me something. It'll cost me my safety. It'll cost me uh, my reputation. It will, it will make me, listen, stand out. And I don't want to, I'm not ready to stand out. Jesus said, you won't stand out for me, Peter. Peter said, no, I do. I love you. I'll never leave you. I, I won't, I'll be by your side. I'll cut off the ear of the person that's after you. 
But when you're not in my presence, Jesus, and when you're gone, I, I'm going to I'm going to declare you are who I know you are. And Peter failed three times, just like Jesus told him he would. That's pretty bad failure, right? Y'all think that's pretty bad? I mean, we're not talking. I think, you know, Simon, at least, when he sold Jesus out with a kiss and for money, he at least went and tried to give the money back. He tried to say, what have I done? Oh, Simon, not once, not twice, but three times. And he knew going in he was going to do it because Jesus said he would. Right? I want y'all to think about this. Wouldn't you think in your flesh, oh, Jesus, he, I, I give up on Jesus so many times. I failed him. He, he, surely he's, gonna, he's going to, to not love me anymore, right? Surely Jesus won't be there for me anymore. He'll, he'll, he'll forsake me. Being a failure is important. Listen to, listen to this. Let me turn to it. Matthew, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 16. Listen to how good it is. Jesus wanted to know if anybody believed in him. Old, old Peter was the first one to stand up. He said, uh, I, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, and Jesus praised him for it. Listen to this. Blessed art thou, Tracy, Athens. You hear me? Blessed art thou, Nelly. What he said. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus blessed Simon Barjona with the designation of Peter. He became Peter. But what, what but but here's the thing. Before Jesus had been had died on the cross and been resurrected, Simon Peter, Simon Barjona had been had been told from God with unequivocally that this is the guy. He was the first one to declare it. And it didn't take him long through this battle boy from Jesus, right? This renaming from Jesus while Jesus was there in the flesh that Simon, he got all in his, he got in his flesh. Like didn't take long in the Bible. Maybe it took a long time. Maybe it took weeks or months. For Jesus to have to rebuke him. But listen to this. It wasn't very long that Jesus started telling his disciples, you know, don't tell anybody what I'm telling you. This is just for you guys that are close to me, but I'm going to have to, to, to go on the cross and die and come back to life. <laughs> and, and this is what Peter said. Um, Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, that this should not be unto thee. Do we do that sometimes? Do we do that? Do we rebuke the Lord? We want to have our way, the easy way. We want it to be like it was the first time. We want, we want, we don't want it to be hard. We don't want to have to go through tough stuff. This is what Jesus said. Get thee behind thee, Satan, for thou art an offense to me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. This is probably, this is one of the first lessons that I can think of where Jesus uses um, somebody else's experience to describe what it's like to really love him but love the world at the same time did y'all did y'all hear it like i heard it can y'all see what i'm trying to get at here 
Peter wanted Jesus with him, wanted it to be easy, wanted to want it. Listen, he didn't want to love what Jesus wanted him to love, the fact that he was going to have that he was speaking from the Father. He loved Jesus as if Jesus was doing the miracles, not his Father in heaven giving him the power. Jesus already said, look, I, I, just because you know I'm the Christ, you can't go telling everybody yet because everybody will think it's me this time in this form that is supposed to be saving. He said, you're missing the point. The point is, is the spirit, not my flesh. So it goes on to talk about how if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow him. Right. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life shall, shall find it. This is about finding ourselves. And if you lose, you what? Somebody say it. You fail. We've got to fail in our flesh first. Hannah, that's right. We got to fail in our flesh first, like Peter. Like Peter, in order to get to the point that I that I want to get across today. First Peter chapter five verses six through seven. We all, if y'all got your Bible, go with me there. First Peter, I got to get there. Chapter five. There it is. Listen to how Peter tells us to deal with failure. This is beautiful. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. I'm pretty sure I said this yesterday, but, but let, let the Spirit of God move on you, Donna, right now, Diane, will y'all try this, Amy? Let the Spirit of God listen for the still, small voice to, to prick your heart. Right, if there's something that you're struggling with to try to, to overcome in your flesh, right? I'm not talking about not taking up your cross and following him. We got to continue to struggle in our flesh. I'm talking about through him, not of ourselves. If you're doing something now of yourself and you keep on failing, right? Listen to what Peter says. Peter, the failure of all failures is given the instruction. Um, this is in his latter years. Listen, Peter wound up. He wound up being that rock that that, that the the church was built on. Peter wound up. He died in faith, not running the, the uh, denying. Peter eventually was able to be martyred as a Christian, as a follower in his flesh. Okay, but listen. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Be lifted up in due time. That you might be able, listen, when we fail, we got to continue to turn it over to him and, and acknowledge our, our, our weak flesh, uh, 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 Kiara. That's where it's at. That's where it's at. It don't, it, it don't feel right. It, it doesn't feel normal or natural because that's not a fleshly thing. But this is what Peter the failure of all failures is telling us to do. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. How much do you feel like a failure? Peter, the failure of all failures, is saying that Jesus never forsook him. Jesus never, ne never, he, every time Peter uh, denied and ran off and, and was a failure. Jesus was still there waiting on him. Jesus was still loving him. Jesus was still available for him. Right? This is what Peter's trying to get us to do. He, he goes on to say a lot of things, but this is where I want to stop today. Right? Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, because he cares for you. He cares for you. Right? When we're not caring for ourselves, Donna, he's caring for us. All he's wanting us to do is turn us around. 
All he wants us to do is turn it around, Kelly. <laughs> he just wants us to turn it around, Melanie, and say, I, I'm, I failed you. Thank you for not giving up on me. It's, it's time for me to do this, to rely on, on your spirit, right? It's time for me to rely on your spirit and not on my flesh or how it feels in my flesh or what the results look like in my flesh. This is all about him. We can make it all about him. We'll make it. That's just the way it is. It's the way it is. It's the way I believe it. You believe that too? Say amen. <laughs> all right. All right. So today is a great day. It's a great day to have a perfect day. It's a great day to have a great day on purpose, right? Every victory we, every time we're victorious, in our flesh, when we do it through the spirit, we're honoring him, okay? We're honoring him. What, are, what kind of instruction can we take from this lesson today? I'm chosen. I've been singled out. And my instructions are to, that's right, Karen. Listen, I, I'm chosen. I've been singled out as special by Jesus himself and my instructions are to watch and pray. Don't be caught sleeping today. If you do, if you do, know, know that, 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 hey, even Peter, the failure of all failures. Hey. But watch and pray. Watch and pray. All right.